All right, Salaam Alaikum guys. I'm here with Sister C. Yeah. Sister C, tell us a bit about yourself. So, are you, you said you was a Christian before. Yeah. Okay. You were, you were. You were, you were. You were. English. My, I have, my English is very bad, uh, so please help me. So, you were a Christian before. What made you come to Islam? Um, I was always a monotheist. I grew up like um, Catholic. Okay. But like, I always never like understood the idea of the Trinity. So I became Pentecostal. So I believe God was one. Okay. But I believe Jesus was um, the Son of God. Okay. But then when I read the Bible, I realized that the term Son of God is not used to mean divinity. Yeah. Um, you know, several people are called sons yeah. of God. In Jeremiah, the Bible. Israel. Yeah, exactly. So. I, then afterwards I realized, nah, I don't believe this. Especially when I realized the Council of Nicaea were the ones who said, Son of God equals divinity. I was mm. like, this is a church invention. Yeah. This is not something that Jesus said. Mm. So then I just kind of, I was a bit like religionless because I believed in God, but I didn't have another belief. However, it was actually like watching future prediction videos of Prophet Muhammad and stuff. Okay, interesting. Uh, that brought me into Islam. Because okay. I was like, wow, all of these things have come true. Um, the authors of the New Testament are anonymous. If I am going to decide to be religious and take my religion for someone, I have a much safer bet uh, trusting this person who's already predicted a bunch of stuff that has come true, okay. rather than anonymous authors who like contradict each other. Interesting. That's very interesting. So it's, it's my my story to you is very similar as well, you know, uh, because if I'm going to put my faith and Im imagine your whole lifestyle. I have to put it on something that there is evidence to, there's truth to. And I give this example to a lot of our Christian friends. If I was to give you a bottle of water and I added a drop of poison, would you drink it? No. Why wouldn't you drink it? Because it would harm your body. But people consume the idea of the Trinity and God becoming a man and they consume this for their soul. And it's going to do nothing because a drop of poison might kill you, your body, but your soul would live, right? But the thing is, when you said, for example, which I hear from a lot of Christians, the concept of the Trinity, it does not make sense. Yeah? She doesn't want to be recorded. Guys, please. She her face doesn't, she doesn't want to be on camera, please. So what you've done there is initially, which we call the fitra. The fitra is your innate disposition. So when I speak to atheists, when I speak to ex-Christians, etc., there's one thing that they say. If we put all religion to a side, they all accept, I can't believe God is a man. I can't believe the Trinity. This is coming from, innately from yourself. Even if Islam didn't exist, you will say, well, it doesn't make sense, you know. Yeah. So like you said, and number two, another thing that you mentioned is that, which the Bible says as well, that you will know them by their prophecies and their fruits. Mm -hmm. So how is it that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, makes all these predictions specific to the detail and it all comes right. Now, he doesn't need to do it because it could jeopardize his, his, his own uh, um, call to action, which is like, if, it was, if he was a false prophet, I would have been like, then why would he come and mention something specific to a specific time? Because if it didn't come true, he would, he would disadvantage his position. Exactly. So for him to do that shows that it has to come from God Almighty. Yeah. And number th third thing that you touched upon, Sister C, is Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. Who are these people? Who are these people? We, we don't know who they are. Exactly. If you read the new commentary of the uh, Jerome commentary of the Bible, he even mentions there, we don't even know who John is. Is it John the Presbyter, John the son of Zebedee or John the Apostle? Mm -hmm. So we have in Islam chains of transmissions. Yeah. So we know, for example, that who we get, for example, the Quran, how it was compiled, this hadith. We have chains of transmission that, that go all the way back to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah. So what message would you give to Christians, some Christians who are out there who are on the verge of, you know, they're a bit maybe confused. Where would you tell them to start their journey? It really depends on what their confusion is, but I would um, say establishing the fact that God is one. Okay. Jesus worshipped God. Thank you, you can't believe that Jesus got tempted in the desert by the devil and then say exactly. uh, Jesus uh, is yeah. God. On the, on the mountain, Can yeah. Can God ever be tempted by exactly. the devil? No. Exactly. So first step is realising Jesus is a human being yep. and um, God is one. And exactly. then I would tell them to start looking at some of the Gnostic Gospels. I'll be honest, there's a lot of prophet in the Gnostic Gospels. Yeah. But you will see where the evidences come from that say the crucifixion didn't happen. Yes. Because some of those Gnostic Gospels were also in Mecca and Medina at the time. Yes. So they should look at that and understand, wait, 
there's a lot of contradicting stories in the Bible mm. and there's a lot of different narrators. Why don't go why don't you go to somebody who has one narration and if you're not sure if they're telling the truth, look at history. Look at all the predictions they said have come true. Yes. One and then look at how intelligent this person is. The economic policy they came with, you know, you go somewhere like uh, Kuwait, Qatar has the best economy in the world. Wow. Look at their military policy. Look how successful it was. There's someone that couldn't read, couldn't write, uh, didn't go to school and they said all of these clever things. This is, subhanAllah, this is a much more reliable source to take. If you want to be religious and you don't know what to do, your best bet is Islam. What do you have to lose? If you're an atheist, you're gonna die anyway. Like, you believe nothing will happen to you if you die. But if you convert to Islam and God isn't real, you're still, nothing's gonna happen to you. But if you accept it, you will go to Jannah. Masha, yes. So they should just acknowledge that. Masha, sister, you know, we should call you Sister C. Dawa. Yeah, <laughs> she did amazing Dawa. I encourage you to do Dawa to fellow sisters at work, your friends, etc. Because, mashallah, very convincing. And may Allah bless you. How long have you been a Muslim? Thank you. Uh, since December. Since December? Wow, yeah. that's, so that's going to be nearly a year. Yeah. So it's about 10 months. May Allah keep you firm, inshallah, Thank and many you. more years to come. And may Allah grant it. you the highest ranks of Jannah. Like May Allah bless you. Day. May Allah accept it from our sister. Thank, Thank you for your thanks for your story, inshallah. And if you guys are watching at home, inshallah, that's the message from her. Worship God alone, inshallah.